darling, you're beautiful, gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down, sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on, you have such a beautiful soul. Let your energy radiate. Hello, everyone. Welcome to your midweek yoga. This is our chakra series. So it is pronounced chakra, like a chocolate with a CH. All right. So I do have some notes in front of me, and I really want to be very particular and really give you the right messaging. So, again, I'm just going to invite you to sit in the most comfortable position you can be in. If you want to sit on a bolster or a block, take a few breaths and just kind of settle in. So we begin tonight with the kickoff of the first of seven chakras and the chakra system. So to start off, um, I'll just give a little brief overview of how the chakras work and how we open up these key areas through breath guided meditation, physical practice of yoga. And there's also some other things that you can try. Reiki, I highly recommend. Um, and if you need that, you can also contact me. I am a trained Reiki practitioner. It will allow the energy to move freely through the harmony that we create, connecting all of our physical body, mind, and spirit. So first, what does... What, what does chakra mean? What is a chakra? A chakra is basically, it's a Sanskrit word, meaning a wheel or a disc. It refers to the energies in the center of the body. Picture these to be like three-dimensional gyroscopes. So sort of spinning energy centers. These seven major energy centers are aligned in front of the spine at the center of the body. So if you can just sort of imagine that, even closing your eyes and just imagining your spine right now, and these seven areas starting at the base, starting at the bottom, at the tailbone, and moving their way up in sequence to the top of the head. So each corresponds with a central nervous system and major organs in those areas or near those areas in the body. So our bodies actually have 21 minor and 86 micro chakras. There's also a few that actually reside outside of the body. Um, you may have heard about Earth Star Chakra. The Earth Star Chakra is actually located below the earth or below your feet. And then there is the Soul Star Chakra, which is located above your head. So those are just two examples of a few that are outside of the body. And then our seven major ones begin at the base of the spine or the pelvic floor, like I had said. This first one is known as the Muladhara or the Root Chakra. And that's followed by the second chakra, which is located just sort of between the hip bones. That is known as the Svadhisthana chakra or the sacral chakra. So think of sacrum and sacral area. Then you have the third chakra, which is the Manipura, and that's uh, associated with the solar plexus. Moving on up, you have the fourth chakra, one of my favorites, the Anahata which is your heart chakra. And then the fifth chakra, which is the Vishuddhi chakra, and that's located in the neck throat region. It's also associated with the mouth, the nose, and the ears. So if you think about that as your communication chakra. And then of course, moving right up onto the sixth chakra, you have the Agna chakra or the Ajna chakra. And that's your third eye. So that's located right here between the eyebrows at the forehead. And then finally, Shastrara chakra, and that is your crown chakra. So it's important to maintain a balance of these areas of energy and to keep them unblocked and flowing, right? We want them flowing throughout the body in order to preserve the physical, mental, and emotional, as well as spiritual well-being. I'll discuss the signs of imbalance and blockages in these areas a little bit later as we go through the practice. But it is important to know that there are colors also associated with the chakras. There are symbols, there's qualities of a chakra, there's an element, earth, wind, fire, air, and also there are mudras, which are our hand movements that can be associated with different chakras as well as mantras and chants. So there's a word or a, almost like om 
that we can say that will help us focus in on those chakras, again, to relieve any imbalance or blockages. There's actually a certain amount of petals from a lotus flower that's associated with each of the chakras. And then I'll offer up uh, some crystals that you may want to bring into your practice or to um, just your daily uh, routines of self-care and maybe even some scents with essential oils. I can make some recommendations for those as well, depending on which chakra we are working on. So starting tonight with the Muladhara chakra, that's the root chakra. We're gonna begin in Sukhasana or easy pose. So again, that can just be uh, sitting cross-legged, maybe not so much on a prop tonight. I'd really love you to be grounded just on your mat as is certainly if we get into some kneeling poses and you do want to bring in a blanket to protect your knees, go for it. But right now I invite you hopefully to close your eyes so that we can do a little mindful visual um, walkthrough and meditation. So again, just kind of settling in, finding your comfortable, easy pose. Starting to take a few deep breaths through the nose and out through the mouth. As always, feel free to sigh or hum or flutter the lips on your exhale, just to get out any of that extra energy you might be holding from your day to day. And as you breathe, let's imagine the earth energy is rising up through the parts of your body that is connected to it. So that would be the outside of your feet, the outside of perhaps your shins, calves, thighs, sits bones. And as you imagine this energy rising up through those body parts, allow them to come all the way to the base of your spine. So that energy is going to be somewhere uh, at the top of your breath at the tailbone maybe the area where the tailbone draws down and falls right between those two sits bones. So that's gonna be that slightly rounded pointed area that supports each of your cheeks of your buttocks. And that's kind of the area where this root chakra is located. Maybe you notice a slight drawing in and up of that pelvic floor area. That pelvic floor area quite possibly is connected to the earth. Feel free to move and rock around a little bit on your sits bones to see that pelvic floor making connection, maybe even just coming a little bit forward in your stance. On the exhales, feel the energy and the swirl around the hip creases, the hip flexors, even the creases at the back of your bum where it meets the hamstring. Feel the breath into the thigh bones, into the muscles. Now start to allow the inhales to come up through the feet, the ankles, the shins, calves, knees, swirling and engaging the release of that pelvic floor when you get to that part up at the top. And just continue on this breathing pattern now at your natural pace, just settle into it. Imagining all that energy coming up from the earth through your root chakra, swirling around and grounding back down through the bottom half of your body, through your legs. Imagine the color red associated with this chakra. The symbol of this chakra is a yellow square. It contains a four petal lotus. The element associated with your Muladhara chakra is, as you would have guessed, the earth. Its quality is primal. It provides uh, the base of foundation to withstand challenges and uncertainty. It is your stability. 
So think about that tonight as we move through our asana. Allowing the legs to draw up that energy through the feet, through the shins, through the knees, the thighs, the engagement, the opening of the hips, settling into that center body, finding your stability throughout the practice, leaning into the ground when you need that extra comfort or support. Slowly, we're going to start to open our eyes very slowly. And feel free to uncross and recross your legs. And then when you're ready, we're just gonna do three, three to six um, sun breaths. So sun breaths will come in. We're gonna open up our arms to the sides and we're gonna inhale really straight arms up to the sky. Hands are gonna come together in Anjali Mudra. So the mudra is the hands in prayer together, bringing that energy into the heart and the exhale. So again, inhaling, bringing the hands to the top and on the exhale, drawing all that energy from around you into the heart space and maybe even bringing it a little bit further down towards the root chakra. Starting up again on the inhale, bringing it down all the way to the root, through the heart. And let's just do another one for good measure because I feel like I talked a lot through that first one or two. When you're ready, we're gonna take four the other direction. So now we're bringing that energy up through Anjali Mudra on the inhale, up to the sky, exhale, spreading that around the space you're in. Again, inhaling, hands to prayer, bringing it up through the heart, up to the sky, surrounding the space with the exhale. And we're just gonna do two more of those, inhaling, at your own pace, exhale. And always remembering each breath triggers a movement, each movement triggers a breath. Always keeping the inhales and exhales. When you're ready to settle in, we're gonna lift both arms up to the sky for a nice inhale, really opening up that whole abdominal area, rooting down evenly on both sits bones feeling the ribs almost knit in on the inhales and keeping them knitted in on the exhales as well. Maybe even bringing them a little bit closer on the exhale so that the belly button draws towards the spine. Nice extended arms. We wanna make sure that we're keeping our shoulders down. We don't wanna scrunch them up by our ears. We wanna really just bring everything down. I'm gonna say down and grounding a lot tonight. When you're ready, we're gonna inhale, rise up, and on the exhale, we're gonna take that right hand behind us, left hand over towards the right knee, using that as leverage, looking over the right shoulder on the exhale. And if you just need to come back in for an inhale a little bit so you can straighten up with your crown towards the sky and take that exhale and maybe just twist a little bit further over to the right. We're gonna hold that twist, so I want you to keep breathing in and out. Remembering to take that breath from the ground, from your lower base. And then exhaling all of that back into the earth or back out into the room. Again, feel free to sigh or hum, flutter your lips. As we just get nice into that twist, really wringing out all the toxins from the day. And I just wanted to tell you a little bit about some crystals that can help um, release, open up, get the lower root muladhara chakra flowing. Those crystals might be hematite, black tourmaline, obsidian, any of those black dark stones, they're really good for grounding. Agate, smoky quartz, and of course, any of the red stones. So picture red jasper, rhodonite, and rubies. When you're ready, you're gonna inhale, coming up to the top with the hands, nice length in the body on the inhale, really reaching and stretching, feeling the grounding, allowing ourselves to be stable on both sides of the sit bones. And exhale, coming now towards the other side. So turning and looking over the left shoulder. And remember, I always say, we inhale to lengthen, we exhale to turn and twist, and we let that gaze go last. 
So we really want to turn the body towards the left so that we're able to let the gaze follow on the exhale. We're going to take a few breaths here, turning to our left. And I'm going to take this moment to talk about scents and essential oils that can also help with the root chakra. So it would stand to reason that anything grassy or earthy would be very helpful for an aromatherapy session if you're feeling a little unbalanced or uncertain. Uh, chamomile, lemongrass, and vetivier are a couple of wonderful essential oils to help with grounding. And then of course, any woodsy scents. So think about frankincense and cedar, sandalwood. Those are wonderful, wonderful aromatherapy aids to help open up or balance the root chakra. All right, on the next inhale, the arms are gonna rise up. And we're going to get into our cat and cow position. So that's going to be started in table. So we're going to make sure that we're at that 90 degree arms, torso, thighs, shins coming out the back. And I like to start with toes curled under for my inhale. When I inhale, my gaze just slightly goes up. The belly drops, the shoulders come back almost as if we're squeezing the shoulder blades and notice that the hip area comes up as well. So that's our cat. And on the exhale, we're gonna maybe open up the feet, pressing the tops of the feet down as if we're lifting off for cat. Now the back rounds, the hips are lower, shoulders almost come forward, the blades are opening up as we press wide fingers into the mat. And then we just come into our own breathing pattern for our inhale for cow, exhale for cat, taking as many of these breaths as you wish, fast, slow, depending on the kind of day you had. Certainly if you need any additional movement tonight, and even if you want to turn your palms, or sh I should say turn your fingers towards your legs, that's gonna open up your wrists. Maybe you had some hectic day on the keyboard today, and that works for your inhale for cow and your exhale for cat. And you can even sit back a little bit towards your ankles. I wouldn't go too far because we don't want to break anything over there in the wrist area, but that gives a nice stretch on the exhale. So you can almost round your back, pressing in to your fingers, inhaling, coming forward. And then of course, if there's any little additional wiggles or swivels that you wanna take, now's the time to just make this your own. Just keep remembering to breathe in any circles. And if you're gonna do anything, just make sure that we're doing it evenly. So if you take three circles to the right, make sure you take three to the left. Same thing with your swivels. And sometimes the twists are just not enough for me and I really love to do a good swivel. So again, taking a couple of extra breaths here at your own pace. When you're ready, we're gonna sit back onto the heels and just come into a little brief child's pose. So maybe extending the arms really far out, straight elbows, and just allowing the torso to first settle onto the tops of the thighs. So I'm gonna suggest a closed-legged child's pose for now. If that's super uncomfortable and you need to open your knees, that's fine. Just keep your big toes touching. And then maybe you can just start to allow the head to drop and maybe you land with your hairline right on the mat. Again, not necessary, but I think if that's going to uh, conjure up any sort of grounding sensation for you, great. If it causes stress, feel free to reach for the block or a prop. You may even want a little blanket or something off to the side. And if you don't have one, feel free to stop and go get that whenever you want. 
I'm just breathing in here, really feeling that opening of the back in child's pose. We're gonna slowly walk the hands back towards the knees. You can keep the head down, maybe looking at your mat. We're gonna extend, we're gonna just come if you can, pressing into the hands and extend that left leg out to the side. So I'm sorry that you can't see my foot fully in the camera, but we want the toe pointed towards the front of the mat, really grounding down on that left foot. The leg is gonna be straight, the thigh is gonna be engaged, and we're gonna sit back down into our child's pose. Now this might be a little bit more challenging to get your head on the ground. So again, that's where a blanket or a block would be really helpful. You can also layer your hands one on top of the other. Sometimes I like to make fists, like two little barrels, and I lean my head there. And just settling in, feeling that nice stretch. So that's happening all the way from the outer edge of the foot across the top instep of the foot. Coming around that left ankle, left side, chin, calf, even the left knee, you can feel. Try not to hyper um, extend too much if you need to give a little micro bend in your knee to take off any uh, additional pressure that might be there or might be starting to build. Feel free to always move within your pose or your yin pose. A yin pose is a yoga pose that we hold for a certain amount of time. So we also wanna be breathing and reminding ourselves of that foundation breath, that grounding breath that's coming from the earth and up. Feeling that full extension on the back body as well as the head and perhaps the hands are helping you find your stability. Again, walk the hands back towards that right knee and see if you can just pop up and bring that left foot back into table. Maybe just take a quick cow and cat here, just to neutralize the spine a little bit. And then we're gonna come to the other side. So now the right foot comes out and we're gonna sink back on that left foot. I like to flatten the tops of my feet, but you know, certainly if you want extra stretch and you want to curl that toe under and really make sure that left toe is making contact, that could give you a nice stretch in the sole of your foot as well. We will be using our feet a lot tonight for our grounding postures. And again, if there's anything uncomfortable, feel free to shimmy and move around, but just settle into a nice little breath as we reach forward, nice active child's pose. So it's sort of like a half gate, half child's pose. Feeling that nice stretch, that nice elongation on the right side coming up across the whole right outer edge of the leg, even the right hip, hip flexor. And then start to walk your hands back towards that left knee and see if we can get that foot placed right back again. Again, another little quick cow and cat, just to neutralize the spine. And then we're gonna take that left leg out to the back of the mat. Toes are gonna curl under. We're gonna lift that left leg and cross it over the top of the right toes. So we're a little bit twisted here. That's gonna give a nice stretch further now up the hip bones. And if you start to walk your hands a little bit more to the right, you can actually almost sickle over. Maybe even take the head looking over that right shoulder again like we did in our seated twists and really opening up that whole left side of the body. The lower you go with your hands, so the further far out you go with your hands, the more you get that stretch coming right up that whole side body, armpit, maybe even getting the arms engaged, feeling a nice stretch happening all the way from that left foot up to the whole left side of the body, and maybe even the left pinky or fingertips. Walking the hands back, we're gonna go back into table, 
take that right foot out to the right. We're gonna bring it over the left foot. Nice little press there. Slowly start to walk the hands in front and then see if you can walk them over to the left and get a nice, nice stretch on the whole left side body. Feeling that from the sole of the foot, grounding into, again, maybe that right pinky toe for stability. Finding a nice balance on that left shin. Really counting on your legs to hold your stability. As we draw that whole right body over towards the left, opening that up and being really conscious and careful not to compress too much the left side. So when we're leaning over towards the left, we're always stretching the right side, but we always wanna make sure that that left side stays open and airy. And that's how we keep the chakras moving and circulating and being able to be little gyroscopes in our body. Slowly walk back to center, coming into table. And then we're gonna go right up into our first down dog. So I like to curl my toes under and just do a little bent knee at first, allowing the head to dangle and that tailbone to draw up towards the ceiling. But as it draws up, it also draws back and down so that I can settle now into my heels. And I have a little bit of a short dog tonight. It's not a super long one. And I really love the bent knee because you can come up on your heels and just lean your entire torso onto your thighs. And that feels like wonderful grounding support sometimes, especially if we've been sitting a long time and our hamstrings are just not ready for a dog. Of course, you can walk your dog, straightening the one leg while the other leg bends, sometimes lifting the heels, coming up to on the toes and coming back down. This is a really nice workout for the calves. And even swiveling, so I love to swivel, just bringing my heels over to the left, coming back up on the toes, bringing my heels over to the right. And the knees are nice and bent, very flexible, very flowy. And then what we wanna do is feel that grounding as we settle into our dog. So movement starts to slow down. We start to check our posture, making sure that the arms are not overextended, that the shoulders are nice and buoyant, equal amounts of pressure in the open palms, the open fingers. The elbow creases should be facing forward in front of you. The points of your elbows or your actual elbow bones should be back towards the back of your mat, towards your feet. Feeling that upward lift in the hips. So right there where we just start to have our root chakra, we wanna have a buoyancy there. We wanna lift that up as if there's straps pulling you at the hip crease up towards the ceiling. Engaging that belly button towards the backbone helps us sort of have that lofty feeling of a balloon underneath us, the top of this little triangle. So lifting that belly up, drawing the spine down and back, settling in for a couple of more breaths, seeing if you can just make that breath nice and smooth, drawing the energy up from the earth, from the hands, they almost become extensions of the feet. And of course, drawing up the energy from the feet through the legs to the apex, to the top of your triangle. Looking forward between the hands, we're gonna slowly tiptoe the feet to the front of the mat between the hands. Feel free to open up the legs here. Maybe the feet are almost as wide as your mat. Taking each elbow with each hand, maybe just some rocking motions in your forward fold. You can keep your knees bent here. There's no need to straighten them right away. Just allow the crown to draw down. I like to wear my ponies and just sometimes pull my ponytail to remind me of where my crown chakra is and to let that draw towards the ground while the energy of the earth is coming up through the even placement of my feet. All four corners of my feet are connected and my arches are nice and elevated. 
And again, knees are bent, really soft, really lofty. Placing your hands on the ground, if that's accessible for you, we're just gonna walk our feet a little bit closer together. Actually hips width distance apart, if that's again in your practice. Pressing into the ground, rooting to rise, really pressing into the earth. Find your way up into standing position. That could be hinging forward, that could be vertebrae by vertebrae, or just popping straight up. We're gonna inhale and the arms are gonna come up towards the ceiling. Nice inhale and the exhale, we're gonna come back into that Anjali Mudra, hands in prayer. So we're gonna place those thumbs right at the stern and making nice connectivity to the heart space. The feet may come even closer together, almost as if we have one big foot out of our two feet, pressing into the four corners of those two feet or one big foot, allowing the energy to rise, maybe thinking about closing your eyes here, if you can find some comfort and stability in your grounding. The knees are engaged. The thigh muscles are drawing towards each other, engaged. There's a slight little tuck at the bottom of the glutes. There's a slight tilt of the pelvis or your pelvic floor moving forward. As the belly draws in, the rib cage knits in and lifts up. We allow those shoulders to really just fall back as if the blades in the back could almost touch. So we're actively engaging a Tadasana standing pose and I invite you to set an intention for your practice. Maybe just making some connectivity to the root chakra. Seeing how that's feeling down there. Maybe even loosening the muscles, you know, loosening and then back to engagement and see how different that feels in your body and your stability. Always allowing the crown to draw up towards the ceiling in this kind of pose or any of our standing poses. Couple of breaths here. When you're ready, feel free to keep your eyes closed or we can inhale, opening our eyes, hands rise up towards the sky upward salute, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, we're gonna bring those hands back through Anjali Mudra and forward fold. Halfway lifting, pressing the hands into the shin, a nice little straight back or even a little bit of an arch in the spine as we look a little bit forward for our halfway lift. Ardha Uttanasana, exhale Uttanasana. We're gonna plant the hands on the ground, just walk back into our Downward dog, sliding forward up on the toes into high plank for your inhale. Exhale, knees are gonna come down, chest is going to lower, elbows are drawing towards the back as we scoop the chin up, pressing into those hands for low cobra. If high cobra is in your practice and you wanna go there already, that's fine. Also up dog. And then finally, exhaling, curling the toes, getting back into our down dog. This time we're gonna take the right foot and we're gonna step it to the outside of the right hand. Exhale, step it back. Inhale, step it forward. And we're just gonna do that a few times. Again, at your own pace, inhaling, stepping forward, exhale, stepping back. Inhale forward, exhale back. Take that right foot now and step it between the front hands. So we kind of have that motion going. We're gonna lower the knee, planting the foot. I like to flatten it out. You certainly could rise on your toes, but I, what I'd like you to do is just kind of get the feeling of this grounding as we go through our sun salves and what those in-between movements should feel like. So take the right and the left hand. We're gonna press it into the right thigh. So you're almost using that leverage. You can actually walk yourself up, pressing in. Once you get there, just a nice little press. Feeling that perfect 90 degree angle and how that alignment and that sensation feels, really stabilizing, again, yourself. So again, if you're on flat foot here, you wanna curl that toe under, hands are gonna plant, and you're gonna use that leverage to press into the right foot, bringing the left to join the right, 
We're gonna halfway lift. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, rise it up however you want. Bring that nice energy down to the chest. An Anjali Mudra for the exhale. Inhale, we're gonna rise it back up. Exhale as we start to fold over Uttanasana, planting those hands down one more time, taking the left foot back, first up on our toes, bring that knee down, press ourselves up, just get a nice grounding elevation here before we frame the foot with the hands, curl that back toe under, and then lift the right foot back to downward dog. Take a vinyasa here, a little knees, chest, chin, or a chaturanga into low cobra. So a little press, a little lift of the chest, or a high lift of the chest. And then finally curling the toes, coming back to down dog. We're gonna do the same thing on the left side now. So we're gonna take that left foot, and we're gonna to start to walk it up to that left outer hand. Going with the breath, inhale, stepping it up, exhale. Inhale, taking that left foot, and bringing it between the hands. Planting that right knee down this time, using your hands to brace yourself up on that left thigh, pressing into the thigh, really elongating the back, allowing that press to lift not only your chest, your backbone, but keep those shoulders down. We don't wanna be up here. So a little press, just so we know what it feels like. Again, curling that back right toe under, we're gonna frame the foot with the hand at the front, press up, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise it up. Exhale, hands to prayer. Inhale, we're gonna go back down the way we came, connecting the hands to the floor first. Stepping back that right foot, high on the toe, dropping the knee, flattening, pressing up, getting a nice lift in there. Really feeling that grounding and pressing and connection. Curl that back toe under, take the hands to frame the foot. This time the left foot's gonna step back to meet the right for down dog. Sliding forward up on the toes into high plank for your inhale. Exhale, knees are gonna come down, chest is going to lower, elbows are drawing towards the back as we scoop the chin, low cobra. And then finally exhaling, curling the toes, getting back into our down dog. All right, this time we're gonna take that right foot up to the sky and we're gonna bring the knee to the nose. So get high on that back toe. That's gonna give you a lot of height in your hips to really drive the hips up. Pressing the hands onto the ground. We're gonna do inhale, rise, exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, rise, exhale, knee to nose. One more time, this time the exhale is gonna come through the front hands. And now we're a little bit higher up than we were originally on our knee. We're gonna keep that knee up this time, but still walk your hand up, pressing into that thigh, seeing how that feels now. So now you've just brought yourself a little bit higher off the ground, but you're still very rooted. You got the right foot pressing in, you got the left toes pressing in, and that beautiful center. By just pressing into the thighs, you can really feel that back alignment. When you're ready, the hands are gonna frame that foot, you're gonna step that left foot up on the inhale, rising halfway. Exhale. Inhale, rise it up. Exhale, bring it in. Forward fold. Plant the hands. Left toe curls under. Press it up. Get that nice lift in your lunge. Really press it in until you frame that foot with your hands, step the right foot back, downward dog. We can lower knees, chest, chin, scoop it up for cobra, high cobra, and then finally landing in downward dog. This time we're gonna do the same thing with the left leg. So the left leg is gonna go to the sky, 
Maybe get high on the ball of the toe. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, lift. Exhale, knee to nose. Feel free to point your toes up towards the ceiling when you lift, or you can do a flex of the toes and point them at the same time. We're gonna step up. We're gonna rise up. We're gonna press up. Finally, lower down, hands frame the feet, right foot steps up for the inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, you know what to do, rise it up. Exhale, bring it in. Inhale, rise it up, exhale, forward fold. Plant that hand, take that right foot back, nice lunge, use your stability, press it in. A nice little buoyancy there. Hands are gonna frame the feet. Foot's gonna come back. Sliding forward up on the toes into high plank for your inhale. Exhale, knees are gonna come down. Chest is going to lower. Elbows are drawing towards the back as we scoop the chin, low cobra. And then finally exhaling, curling the toes, getting back into our down dog. Taking a couple of breaths here after your vinyasa in your down dog. Taking that right foot up again. This time we're going to actually bend the knee and we're going to let it fall over towards the left. So that left hip bone is saying hello to your right ankle bone. And maybe you can even look under your right armpit and really open up that hip flexor, keeping a nice buoyancy and then that left hips will still be pointing forward. And then when you're ready, we're gonna take that right foot, once again, placing it on the outer side of the right hand. So both of your hands are on the inside of that right foot. We're gonna ground down on the left palm and slowly peel that right arm up to the sky. So we have a nice little lunge and a nice little twist here. Couple of breaths. Feeling the draw of the heel in the back towards the back of the mat. Breathing in, breathing out. And a nice grounding from that left palm coming straight up the body, across the collarbone, all the way up through the right fingers. When you're ready, that hand's gonna come down. We're gonna drop the knee, maybe flatten the foot in the back. So the top of the foot is flat, making some nice contact with the left pinky toe to the mat. Got a nice bend in this right leg here. So the hands are here. We're gonna walk them forward and we're gonna see if we can get a nice stretch. Again, if getting your chest or your head to the floor is in your practice, great. If it's not and you need a blanket or a block to lean on, go for it. Just wanna show you what the back of this pose looks like. So if the right knee and maybe even coming to the right edge of that right foot and you're able to really lower down on your forearms. So we're opening up that left hip flexor. As much as we're working the right hip, we're also working the left, just in different, different degrees. So really drawing that right thigh bone in towards the right hip and opening up that left thigh bone. I caution you not to overextend that left thigh. So if you need to be a little bit higher and you're not as low with the pelvis to the floor, that's fine too. So a couple of breaths here in lizard pose. Slowly pressing the hands coming up onto both hands. We're gonna sit back on that left heel or towards the left heel. We don't fully wanna sit on it. And we're gonna allow the right heel bone to kind of dig into the front of the mat. So it's almost hard to pull it back. The knee is gonna be uh, straight or slightly bent. We don't wanna hyperextend that. And once again, we're just gonna fold over, but this time towards the right leg. It's almost like a runner's lunge. Sometimes I like to reach forward with the left hand and get a nice stretch, not only 
in the right hamstring and right calf, but also allowing my left side body to get a nice stretch too. Really letting the head be uh, soft, allowing the breath to be smooth. Remembering that we can breathe in and draw up all that energy from the earth. Let it circulate around the joints that are working so hard for us right now. And then just expelling that energy back into the earth. Or in this case, since it's a forward fold, allowing it to expel through the crown, the top of the head back into the earth. Coming back up, we're gonna bend that right knee. Hands are gonna be now on either side of that knee, curling the back toe under. Coming back up to down dog. Feel free to take a vinyasa here if you'd like. A little knees, chest, chin, or a chaturanga into low cobra. So a little press, a little lift of the chest, or a high lift of the chest. And then finally curling the toes, coming back to down dog, going for the left side this time. So we're taking the left foot up to the sky, reaching it back, seeing if we can touch the right butt cheek with the left heel. And maybe the gaze comes under the left armpit. A couple of circles, wiggle it around. And finally, we're gonna straighten up. So the hips are gonna be straight. We're gonna take that left foot and bring it to the outer part of the mat, which is gonna be on the outside of the left pinky. Again, that knee is dropping down here, but we wanna pick it up. So we're gonna curl the toes under, make sure that knee in the back is nice and lofty. The right hand is gonna grow down. The left hand is gonna peel up towards the sky, breathing in for our twist. Pressing in, pressing in through the fingers, pressing in through the left foot, pressing into the right ball mound, lifting up the whole hip area, sucking up the energy from the earth and allowing that beautiful wingspan to come straight up from the earth all the way out through the left fingertips. Until we're ready to lower it down, lowering that right knee down and taking it down for lizard pose. So again, you can see here, I like to come a little bit on the outer edge of my left foot. That gives me some nice opening and space to work with in my left hip. And it also allows me to get really low on my right hip flexor, which I can do, that's within my practice. But even sometimes I just don't wanna go down that low. So I'll just come back up on my knee, I'll take it back. So when they talk about that in yoga, pulling it back, taking it back, that's what it means. We don't always have to be at our fullest extension to enjoy the benefits of the pose. In this case, it's a grounding pose. It's a hip opening releasing pose. And anything that happens in those lower areas that we're able to open, extend, bend, will allow that chakra to move and flow a little bit better, especially when we combine it with our breath. Couple of breaths here. Walking the hands back drawing the seat towards that right heel, allowing the left toes to come up towards the sky, really dragging on that left heel. Straighten the leg, take a nice inhale. Again, I always recommend lengthening on the inhale, drawing up, drawing the back straight, and then exhale, forward fold. So a nice little runner's lunge. Again, you can reach that right hand forward. I like to keep the left hand here for stability. I'm just tenting my fingers and really feeling that beautiful stretch that's also coming up the right side of my body. You can also take some relief in that straight leg pose and you can even bend into it and then pull back, and bend into it and pull back. Just remember each movement is a breath. So we wanna keep breathing. Okay, when you're ready, we are gonna bend into that knee. We're gonna lift up on the toes. We're gonna take that left foot, swing it back, downward facing dog. Again, if you wanna go for a quick vinyasa, go right ahead. So you're gonna inhale for plank, 
You're going to exhale and lower, whether that's through chaturanga or knees, chest, chin. You're going to inhale for a little back bend. So that might be your cobra. That might be up dog. And then finally, exhale for down dog. And by the way, you can always take a child's pose at any point in time through any of these transitions. A couple of breaths before we take that right leg up to the sky. We're gonna step it through the front hands. We're gonna pivot that left heel back. So we're setting up for warrior two. Again, I invite you to find that stability in your feet. And if you need to take the hand to the thigh and really press up into it, find your stability, find that distance that works great for you. Maybe it's a wide legged warrior two tonight. Maybe it's a little more narrow. Maybe you're feeling really flexible in that back foot. So you're getting that toe to really point up towards the middle of the side of the mat. Or maybe you're more here at a 45. The key here is to keep the hips open. Dropping down into that right knee and drawing the right knee towards the right. Arms are gonna raise up as if we are on a water line. And that drishti gaze is gonna come over the right fingers. I want you to feel the pull of the inner thighs towards each other. That's really a large part of this stability in this pose. Again, drawing up the energy through the feet, like little suction cups in the arches. Pressing into the right foot, we're gonna straighten that right leg. Left hand is gonna either come back towards the thigh, or you can even curve it around your back. We're gonna take the right hand, palm up, overhead, for a peaceful triangle. A couple of breaths here. Again, enjoying that stability. Feeling the drawing of the earth. This time coming from the right toe all the way up the right shin, right kneecap, right top of thigh. Feel it almost coming over your hip, abdomen, right rib cage, right armpit, circling around elbow out the fingertips palm is facing towards the earth and on the exhale we're going to hinge forward reaching forward i say grab a block tonight we can go into this triangle pose with the block in front or the block in back sometimes i like to place it behind my foot in fact that's usually where i will place it because i like to really lean into my triangles so again, we've hinged forward, we've reached for the floor of the block, turn that chest, the right rib cage especially, and try to bring it forward. When we do that, it's giving us the twist. Now we can elongate the arm and what comes next? The gaze. So now we can turn and look up towards the left fingertips. And again, if you wanna just open up and lean back in with the blocker hand placed strategically behind the right side foot, you can really do that. Drawing up all that energy right from the ground up. This is where it's gonna get tricky, my friends. So we're going to take the hands down and we're gonna pivot that left back heel all the way back. So we're almost on a railroad track. The toes are pointing forward. You might want to shorten your stance a little bit so that you can gain a little bit more stability. We're just going to fold over to pyramid pose. Now, again, you can use the block just as an additional stability. We're not really using it to lengthen the body necessarily in pyramid because we want to draw the crown towards the earth. So we're sucking up the energy from the earth and returning it back through the crown. Maybe we're also absorbing through the crown some of Mother Earth's energy and returning it through the feet. Couple of breaths here in pyramid. Feeling that right hamstring extend, the right calf. Being careful again not to overextend that right knee. If you need to give it a little micro bend, please do so. It's fine to change a pose in the middle. This is not you know, a true yin pose. We don't hold it that long, but if you are holding a pose and you need to do that, go for it. And then I'm gonna just slowly rise, a little bit of a hinge. 
I'm gonna switch that block over to the inner part of my foot. And I'm gonna bring it really towards the outer edge of my mat. I wanna keep that 90 degree angle still with my torso and my arm, because I really need my arm to press and really, really get the um, empowerment of the ground and the energy right up through that arm. And then what's gonna happen is I'm going to inhale this time, my head drawing forward, my crown drawing forward, and I'm slowly gonna come up. I'm gonna cheat a little tonight. We're gonna to come up on the ball of that left foot, turning towards the right. Maybe that right arm peels up towards the sky. Again, maybe there's that little micro bend in the right knee if you're feeling a little bit tweaky. And then maybe you might even wanna experiment and see if you can get that left heel to make contact with the mat. So you're really driving that left leg, that back leg back for a reverse pyramid. A couple of breaths here, making sure we're not collapsing into that left shoulder. So we don't want the ear, to, we don't want any shrugging happening. We really wanna be pressing in, getting the empowerment of that beautiful grounding energy up through the left arm, opening up the left shoulder, turning the head towards the fingers, allows you to also get some space. And when you're ready, we're gonna come down. That right hand is gonna come to the ground. You can place the block off to the side. We're gonna walk the hands to the long side of the mat. So just walk your hands over towards the left. And we're just gonna give a little bend of the knees. You can let the head dangle. If you wanna hold the ankles and just have a little breather here in your wide leg forward fold. Also a nice little neutralizing pose after we do our twists. Feel free to put your hands on the ground or grab a prop. And you can also just come halfway, which is kind of nice too. It's a nice neutralizing pose, but you get to elongate the spine. If you're using a block the way I am, I'm feeling some great opening up in the um, shoulder blade area, which is phenomenal. And I'm just trying not to lift my head other than to talk to you on the screen, but having a nice straight neck so that I'm not, not dipping it and cutting off anything. Once we've opened up all these passages through our chakra system, we wanna make sure that we keep them open. We work so hard to elongate and stretch and fold that we don't wanna really be blocking anything. So again, just empowering yourself through the grounding of you know, a block or a piece of furniture is totally fine because it's all touching the earth, right? All right, we're going to slowly heel toe our legs, I'm sorry, our feet to touch. Take the hands to the hips and rise. Maybe just a nice little hinge is happening there for you. And then what we're gonna do is get ready for our tree pose, of course. So. I'm gonna recommend maybe not going for the full tree today, but if that's in your practice, by all means, go for it. We're gonna ground down into the four corners of the right foot this time. We're gonna take that left foot, and we're just gonna kickstand the heel right into the ankle of the right foot. So the left knee is pointing directly towards the left, drawing up all that delicious energy from the earth. Feel free to close your eyes if you're doing a low tree like this, because that's kind of empowering as well. Maybe the hands come to the hips. And of course, if you need to place your foot a little bit higher, and you just wanna really feel the practice, allowing that tree pose to really have the earth and the energy in its roots. So again, go into whatever tree pose is comfortable for you. I'm just gonna stay here tonight as I walk you through. Coming to that same engagement in the right leg that we did in Tadasana pose tonight. Drawing up all that energy from the four corners of the feet and the arch of the foot to the shin, to the calf. Really rising up, feeling that rise, feeling that lift. So as you're grounding down, as the roots of your tree are grounding down, you're able to actually lift up through that baseline. Maybe drawing the belly towards the backbone, 
knitting in those ribs, really lifting. Maybe the arms can start to lift as well. So we're rooting to rise up to the branches of our tree. Neck is nice alignment. The chin may be drawing back just a little bit. And imagine that beautiful lift of your tree. And when you're ready, branches come down, leg comes down. And just wiggle it out a little bit. And then we're going to get back to down dog, however you like, so that we can get to the other side. So coming up on our toes, we're gonna to take that left leg, bring it up front, get into warrior two on this side. I'm gonna switch sides just so we can be engaged with each other. Straightening that leg, bringing the hand. In my case, I'm gonna bring it around my back. Palm is gonna come up and over for peaceful triangle. Couple of breaths here, feeling that nice stretch, opening that left rib cage, drawing up the energy from the earth and drawing those thighs together as I hinge forward, switching my block to this side, really pressing into that left hand, almost leaning back as I take this time, the left rib cage, drawing it forward, peeling up that right arm towards the sky. And then my drishti gaze can happen to meet right up there with my fingertips, feeling that nice elongation. Couple of breaths here, feeling the stretch. And then just pivoting that back right foot. So again, we're on railroad tracks here, maybe shortening the stance just a little bit. Breathing in, nice elongation of the spine before we take the exhale, fold over for pyramid. Maybe using our block. Drawing the crown towards the earth, finding our stability. Sometimes it's nice to have two blocks, one on each side of the foot. And just really feel that nice stretch happening at the left back hamstring. Being careful not to overextend that left kneecap. A couple more breaths. And when you're ready, slowly lifting up. We're gonna switch over the block now, making sure that that's on the right side of the mat. So that's gonna be the inner of the left foot. Pressing in, really getting some nice grounding stability. Remember that empowerment through the grounding in your practice is through the support of a block or the floor. Pressing in and lifting up that left side for a nice reverse triangle. Again, feeling that super extension happening. I'm feeling it a lot in my armpits. I don't know why today, but I am. And still allowing that stability to happen not only through the hand and the arm that's supporting the upper body, but those back feet, those back legs. See if you can wiggle your toes. See what's like happening there. You wanna make sure that everything is really open at this point. So where are you feeling any sticky sensations in this twist? Breathe into it. I know that it goes against nature, but sometimes we need to relax into those areas that we're really feeling clogged and stiff. Just trust in the support of your legs and your arms. Trust in the support perhaps of nearby furniture. And you know what? If you fall, you fall. You just get right back up. Maybe a little bruised, maybe a little battered, but you figure it out. We always do. Bringing the hand back down to the earth. We can um, take our block with us if we want to use it again as we turn towards the wide side of the mat. So this time you'll be actually walking your hands around towards the right side. So you're at the right side of your mat. I'm just facing forward to you because that makes the most sense. And taking a nice forward fold. If it is in your practice and you would like to do a, hand, a headstand, go for it. I will not be doing that tonight, but I wish you much luck and success as you truly get to ground your crown to the earth. 
And if that's not in your practice, I encourage you to try to even stack a couple of blocks together so that you can connect the crown of your head with the top of your block. So even if a headstand is not in your practice, that's just a really cool thing to do. The other thing that I do like to do is sometimes I'll get my head down there by bending my knees, right? And then I kind of let my knees lean on my biceps or my elbows. So technically I am in a headstand, but it's super supported. I've got this whole almost square shape that I'm supported by, creating a pyramid effect almost between my head and my hands. Um, so that's like also like a great way to just, you know, do like a quickie headstand, especially if you're surrounded in community with people one day soon, you don't wanna be falling on top of anyone. That's just a great way. All right, so if you are up, we're gonna slowly start to rise. Again, let's just get a little halfway left here an hour. Uh, forward fold or a wide leg forward fold before we start to walk our feet a little bit closer together. In my case, I'm going to once again almost be in Tadasana as I slowly rise or quickly rise, hands to hips. And we're going to set up for, for a tree pose on the other side. So we're grounding this time into the left foot. The right foot is going to come up. The right knee is going to point towards the right. And again, go with whatever feels most comfortable for you in your tree pose. And you can also grab some furniture and feel supported that way. Another great idea, if I could get closer to my window or back wall, would be sometimes you can just lean up against the wall. Sometimes you could be an inch away, just knowing that it's there is helpful. But again, I'm not gonna over challenge you tonight because it's really about finding that root system. So once again, maybe closing our eyes, Feeling the earth coming up through that grounded left foot. Allowing it to come up through the legs. Imagining your root system drilling down into the earth, stabilizing you, supporting you. As you drop the energy and the breath into the chest, the chest rises, the chin draws back and maybe the hands come to join as the crown draws up towards the sky, the branches and the leaves of your tree join the direction skyward. We take a few breaths here in tree pose. And again, if there's some tilting or swirling or some waving, that's just the waves, that's just the air. <laughs> that's just the breeze that's happening surrounding you and maybe in your body. And if you fall over, that's cool too. And when you're ready, the arms come down, the foot comes back down. And we're gonna just take the feet a little wide step apart. So maybe just a little bit wider than our hips and see if we can take our hands to our hips and slowly start to bend our knees as we get into yogi squat. Now, again, you can use your block on any level whatsoever. And you can just squat down here. The key to this is to try to keep the heels on the ground. So we really want flat feet. We don't want to bring our knees in and come to the inner edges of the feet or the outer edges of the feet. Well, that's actually where you do want to try to be. You can use the block or you can just allow that center area, your pelvic floor to draw down. Pressing the inner edges of those knees with the outer edges of the elbows. Putting the hands in Anjali Mudra, pressing the palms together really allows you to get leverage and open up your malasana yogi squat. You wanna keep the crown once again, drawing towards the ceiling. And if crow is in your practice and you'd like to do a little crow, go for it. Otherwise, just enjoy the stability. And again, I invite you to close your eyes just for a moment of contemplation as we get closer to our source, closer to the earth, closer to our grounding for our root chakra. Come out of our crow, 
hips rock a little bit, opening up the knees a little. As we slowly settle down to sit. And then we're going to slowly roll onto our backs. So maybe this would be a perfect time if you have any socks or anything, you want to put them on or get them nearby. If you need any props for your Shavasana, you like to support um, behind the thighs or even um, I'm going to recommend <clears throat> a little roll for behind your neck. So you don't want it to be that high. You want it to just be high enough to fill in that little arch, that little space that we have between our lower neck and skull. You can get that set, but just kind of keep it towards the outer edge. We're just gonna go into a bridge pose right now. So we really don't need anything other than that one block. As we lie down, planting the feet as close to the buttocks as we can get them. So each heel is close to their own butt cheek. And we're gonna bring the knees just close enough so that we can hold the block in between our legs. So now if you don't have a block and you have like a thick book or something that you can put there, that would be great. If you don't, that's fine too. If you can roll up a towel and stick it there. We're just gonna experiment with grounding through the press of the legs together. So we wanna make sure that the lower back is completely down and engaged with the floor. So we can tilt our pelvis forward just a little bit so we can feel that press and then maybe just relax into it a little bit. On the inhale, we're gonna press into the feet and lift up the hips. So we want like a nice little pool here. We don't wanna be overextending the hips too much. But when we press the legs together, we draw the knees forward, or I should say towards the back of your mat, which is now the forward part of your mat. We can really get a nice engagement of the glutes, the hamstrings, the front of the thighs, all the way through to the heels. But I don't want you to just press through the heels. I want you to feel the balls of your feet and the toes also engaged in your lift. So this is just a nice little easy back bend. And we're gonna be breathing through this for a couple of more rounds. And if you wanna really engage, you can actually draw your shoulder blades together in the back. So you kind of have to walk your upper arm. That's gonna drive the chest a little bit higher. Again, you don't need to overextend that hip. You can let it almost just hang out a little as if you could hold some water right there between your hip bones. The chin is gonna to draw towards the chest. And I like to sometimes just engage my hands so my fingers are really energized and pointing up to the sky. Or in this case, since we're doing a grounding practice, I'm gonna actively press my palms into the ground. That's gonna connect my upper arms even further. I'm gonna feel some nice grounding happening through the shoulders, the back of the neck, the back of the skull. One last press, a nice inhale, slight little lift of the hips as we exhale and bring it down. I'm gonna take the block out just for a second, little windshield wiper here, just to, again to neutralize the spine. After a back bend, we don't want to lift the knees up too quickly. Take it nice and easy. And then when you're ready, replace the block. You need to get your upper arms in place. And certainly, you can remove the block and go into wheel if that's in your practice, which would be planting your hands with your fingertips facing your shoulders drawing those knees together, pressing up through the ground. Oops, that's why I can't hold the block there. <laughs> and taking your back bend that way. It's also nice sometimes to take your arms up above the head. And you can also practice your grounding that way. This time you're pressing really through the fingertips, the backs of the hands, into the earth, Really feeling the engagement of the glutes, pressing in for your last back bend. Little inhale, just raising a little bit more of those hips and then finally exhale, releasing them down. Moving your block off to the side, little windshield wiper here. A 
We're gonna take the knees to the chest. We're gonna put the legs up towards the sky. And this is gonna be our forward fold tonight. The final one before grounding down, enjoying our Shavasana. So maybe close the eyes, allow the feet to just be relaxed. You don't need to engage them. We're not doing um, a supine dandasana. There's no action required. Just allow those thigh bones to almost melt into the hip creases. Allow the knees to be soft. And just settle into your breath here as we start to wind it down. And I'm gonna give you some information on signs in your body that could be the reason why your root chakra is off balance. If you notice problems in your legs, circulation, your feet, aches and pains, even in the lower tailbone, if you suffer from knee pain or sciatica, possibly early stages of arthritis, and any rectal pain, could be signs that perhaps there's an imbalance in your root chakra. Stress from anxiety, insecurity, and uncertainty can also cause imbalances in this area of the body. If you need to let your knees bend and just slowly draw now towards your chest, that's fine. If you're comfortable with, I see some of you have legs up the wall, you can shimmy over to a piece of furniture. As I introduce you to maybe some signs of why there could be a blockage in your lower root chakra. These signs would be uh, issues with digestion, possible food issues, and constipation. There may be adrenal gland imbalances or blockages, which would affect the regularity of your hormones. A hormone such as cortisol, which as we know in these times is affected by stress. Slowly, I invite you to lower your legs and fall into Shavasana, feeling that connectivity of the lower back again. So if you need to actively tilt your pelvis a little bit, and let it fall and tilt it a little bit and let it relax just so that you can keep that nice contact with the floor all the way from the tailbone, lower spine, thoracic spine to the cervical spine, which is why I offered you to introduce a little roll to put behind the neck so that you have a nice supportive grounding there and that it's not just floating in space. And again, same thing for the legs, if you need a little lift behind the thighs on a bolster or blocks, and just allow the feet to relax and, and splay towards the bottom corners of your mat as you close your eyes and start to enjoy this nice connectivity to the earth. Begin to relax into this posture, feeling the support and energy that's still drawing up from the ground, even though you're in stillness now. Think of your body as a sponge that you're able to absorb this earth energy, starting with all the skin that's connecting to it along the back body. And just as a sponge would absorb, feel the energy coming into the tissues, the muscles, finally the bones traveling through the center midline of your body and absorbing up into the other muscles, tissues, and finally the skin on the front body. And as you float for a moment in this spongy, comforting softness, maybe try to imagine now that your body is almost becoming vertical. So your toes are just floating above the soft earth and your head is drawing up towards the sky.
slowly allow each toe of each foot to sink into this soft warmth, the support in either the earth, the soil, perhaps it's sand in your mind, or a little warm mud. And slowly your body lowers as your feet are surrounded by the earth followed by your heels, ankles, lower limbs, almost as your root system feels like it's growing down and extending out into the soil, the sand, or the mud. As it warmly surrounds the kneecaps, the back of the knees, lower thighs, back hamstrings, as you sink deeper and deeper, more fully supported, submerged and held, till you arrive at your pelvic floor, your hip flexors, and notice how the upper part of your body feels elevated and lifting, but fully supported by the lower half of this growing root system that allows you to be nurtured by the earth, and to grow, to find your stability and your comfort as you fall for the next few minutes into your true Shavasana. If you'd like to slowly come into your breath, some slight movements of the fingers and toes, ankles and wrists, and join me to slowly turn over to the side. Otherwise, feel free to stay in your Shavasana and just listen in as I take you through the Muladhara Mudra which is your hand placements and the Muladhara mantra chant of Lam. So if you're on your sides, take a nice deep breath. I like to usually take one or two in fetal position before I press into the earth to support me and slowly lift, always raising your head last and coming into whatever is your cross-legged pose or choice of cross-legged pose tonight, whether that is Sukhasana or not. Maybe keeping the eyes closed, I will invite you to draw the crown up towards the sky and maybe draw the thumb and the index finger together on each hand, splaying the other fingers with the palm up towards the sky, extending the hands so that the arms and elbows are straight and leaning those backs of the forearms just above the wrist area on top of each of your knees for your muladhara mudra. And then we're gonna just take a couple of nice inhales and exhales. 
And maybe on the third exhale, I would invite you to chant the root chakra mantra of LAM. So we like to extend the AH. So maybe we all take a nice breath in together. And on the exhale, la really extending the M just like we do with the Om. On the next inhale, really breathing in the energy from the earth. And on the exhale, celebrating that beautiful round circular gyroscope motion of your Muladhara chakra. La One more time, inhale. La Drawing the hands now into prayer at the sternum or hand over hand over heart, lowering our chin to our chests. I thank you so much for joining me tonight in your practice, thanking each other as well, and most of all, thanking yourself. And I will leave you with one final thought, that remembering the air you breathe must reach the roots in order for them to form your foundation. So just like roots, we need air, we need water. So keep them growing, keep them thriving, keep them nurtured. Taking knuckles to third eye with a little bow of the head, wishing you a beautiful evening. Thank you so much for joining us. And I look forward to celebrating our second chakra next week. Take care. Darling, darling, you're beautiful. Gotta keep your head up. Never let anything bring you down. Sunshine will always come around. Stay strong, move on. You have such a beautiful soul. Let your energy radiate.